Fight and talk back again at the I'm delighted to be joined by Stuart Austin ahead of his bout against John Winter this Saturday on Octagon 42. Stuart, first things first, thank you so much for me. I know it's a very hectic fight week, so I really appreciate you taking some time. How are things? Oh, thanks for having me, Jake. Um, no, it's good. Good fight week. Um, it's uh, it's not quite as bad for me as some of the guys. Obviously, I'm, I'm heavyweight and I don't have to cut, so that's not too bad. But generally pretty good. Just uh, went and got in a workout. I sort of stopped halfway home. Um, because we were talking afterwards, so I didn't get back in time. But um, yeah, no, no all, all good at the moment. All good. Just uh, you know, sort of like uh, just killing time now, killing time, getting some light workouts in, just keeping keeping the cobwebs from uh, from accumulating. If we start on that, I mean, you've been around the sport long enough now. But typically, what does a fight week look like for you? What does this one look like? And have you are you a fighter that's got certain superstitions going into a fight week, or do you just play it all by ear? Um, like, to be honest, because I've been on the road a lot, um, often fight week has been spent in a hotel. Um, so like, I'm actually not flying out this week till the Thursday and fighting on the Saturday. Um, so it's quite nice for me because it's only a, the two hour flight to Bratislava. So, um, I'm just kind of, you know, business as usual, but a bit more chill. Um, just allow myself to, you know, rest and recover, just getting some workouts in, getting a sweat on. Um, trying not to get any fatter um or you know heavyweight business you know it's all good though i know it's obviously the first fight of your multi-fight deal as well i know you've probably spoke to a lot of promotions you've fought a lot of promotions in the past what was it specifically about octagon that made you really want to sign on for a multi-fight deal with them um i i like that they there was a there was a clear career path for me um so they basically laid out, you know, what I need to do to get to to get to the belt and to you know to get to this stage and this stage. Um, so that made sense for me. Um, the other thing they they actually made it clear to me that they said like you know like if you're holding the belt, we're not going to want to let you go. You know, they said like if you, if you've got that belt around your waist at the end of the contract, we were going to be wanting to renegotiate, give you more money, you know, build you build you into something for us. Um, rather than just sort of, you know, send you on your way, which which is nice because a lot of shows, there's kind of no, there's no progression. You kind of hit a glass ceiling, um, not just financially, but kind of like in terms of career progression, you know, like, an, and as Octagon are, are, as a show, they're growing and developing, you know, like hopefully I can, I can move with them. Um, and, you know, some, some of these, some of these places, like the, the progression is to leave, is to leave. So I feel like, you know, Octagon are, you know, like they're, they're doing a good job of keeping hold with some of their top fighters and some of their champions. You know, you see guys who've been fighting for them for, you know, like eight, 10, 12, 15 fights. Um, so, you know, so they must be happy that they're, they're, those guys are definitely getting offers elsewhere. So, yeah, like, some, something's got to be keeping them there. So, and, and so far, the, you know, the numbers were reasonable um, and the offers have been right. As I mentioned at the top of the interview, there is John Winter you'll be facing in this first bout of this contract. How important is it for you to get in there and really make a big statement and really show these Octagon fans what you're about? Oh, yeah, it's, it's massive. Um, you know, if, if people don't want to watch me, then, you know, why do Octagon want to pay me at the end of the day? Like, I feel like a lot of people don't realise that, you know, this is an entertainment sport, you know. Um, it Winning you know, does matter massively, but um, you've kind of, you've got to go out there and, and, and make fans want to, want to watch you, you know, whether it's, and there's a bunch of ways to do that. Some, some ways it can be the fighting, some, some of it can be the talking, you know, I want to get uh, a little bit of mic time if I can, you know, introduce myself, get, you know, talk some shit if, if, if possible, but, um, you know, it'd be more fun when, once I'm in front of him, I can, I can frustrate him a little bit, bamboozle him, you know, um, mm. But um, no, it it it's 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 going to be fun, and I, I am an I am an entertainer, you know. Sometimes to my own detriment in terms of fighting, so I don't think that should be too much of a problem. I feel like people are going to enjoy what I do. On John Winter, then, if you look at him, look, there's not a huge amount of footage out there on him. What I have seen is quite an unorthodox sort of striker. What do you make of him as an opponent? Uh, he's a he's a big athletic guy. He's from a gym that's you know produced some some decent fighters. Uh, I actually fought one of his teammates um, before at light heavyweight. Um, you know, so like they've got some, they've got some big solid dudes out there. You know, they've like they've got you know plenty of international fighters. And and being an orthodox doesn't necessarily mean you're bad. It means you're like 
it means it's like it's can be hard for me sometimes to get training pauses and stuff to to simulate the same rhythms and patterns that he's going to do because he he sometimes does stuff that's maybe not like uh kind of what a conventional coach would say is good but in a way it can be sometimes more effective because it's unusual you know like it's uh, it's kind of off rhythm and, and slightly off pattern but it's interesting i i personally think you know i think i'll beat him everywhere striking grappling and and uh, uh, wrestling um but you know that's why we have the fight if, if if we did it all on paper you know it'd be a lot easier for me i wouldn't have to do any uh, uh, you know running on the treadmill you know jumping onto a box lifting the weights and sparring Look, you are as well vastly more experienced than him. How much of a role can you see that playing in the fight? Because like you said, there, you've been in with guys like this before. It's one of them now where almost you've seen everything. So how much do you think the experience will play a factor in the fight? Uh, I mean, I, I I hesitate to say it's experience. I just think the better guy's going to win. And if that's me, then we can say it's because I've had so many fights. Or if that's him... It's because he's a natural lit talent, blah, 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 rubbish, you know, all that bullshit. You know, like all the people, you know, John Jones fought on his way up, you know, had all this experience and he smashed the pants off of them, didn't he? So, like, it, you know, experience only works if you're better. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm worse, they'll be saying, oh, you know, he's, he's, he's over the hill. He's had too many fights. You know, so if I lose, you know, experience is the thing that's wrong with me. And if I win, then that's the reason why, you know, like, at the end of the day, who's better at kicking and punching, you know, will probably uh, will probably have their hand raised. On that then, I know on an Instagram post recently you've said that, look, you've really changed up your training going into this one. I was wondering if you can sort of tell us a bit about that and how and why you've decided to change it now. Um, these days now, like I basically, for a long time, I was at a different gym. And these days I now, I, I train at the gym I coach at. Um, and I do go elsewhere a little bit. I, I work with uh, a guy called Marcus Paul and a striking coach called Ryan Katsu. But um, the vast majority of my training now is, is at Fighter Zone London. Um, so, like, I'm I'm kind of sort of an athlete coach now. So I'm, I coordinate a lot of what I'm doing. A lot of my own training is planned and, and, and done by myself. You know, I, I run what we want to do. And I, as I said, I have, I have Marcus and Rowan coordinating from the outside giving me you know like keeping me up to date giving me get helping me with game plans and stuff like that but i'm running a lot more of the things myself now and uh honestly like the first fight i had was my last one um and it perhaps wasn't my you know my most aggressive performance but it was pretty much a shutout you know i dominated the fight they give it a split decision but it's like it's a bit of a fast that it was a split decision i dominated the whole fight you know he had 20 seconds at the end of the first round when i made an error um, and people give him the first round. I actually watched it back and I felt like I won all three rounds, you know. Um, but it, it's kind of a case like I'm just happier now training, doing things my way, you know, like, uh, and, and as a result, like, I personally feel like my training partners, you know, a lot of the guys came with me, like, have got better, have improved. We've brought in new guys who've seen what we're doing. We're having a lot of success and people have wanted to join us. So we've kind of brought in a few people. Um, I, I don't want to build, you know, I don't want to have an ATT style gym. I don't want to have, you know, like in, in my own training group, I don't want a hundred people, you know, five or six is more than enough, but I want five or six guys of quality. So um, that's, that's been a big change as well. It's like, it's like you have to be there, you know, on, on quality alone. And we, we go to other good guys as well. You know, we go and train with other people as well. Cause it's, you know, we can get benefits from people in London who, who, um we're friends with and we've trained with in the past um but right now it's basically like i'm kind of running my own ship a little bit more and you know like i've got people i trust um to help me and give me input as well and sort of steer me but it's it's kind of more on me now i know you mentioned there as well like now you're almost like a coach slash athlete if you like at uh, your gym how what have you found the coaching aspects added to your game as a fighter um, one of the big things is I'm just being more disciplined now. Like, uh, like I've got eight losses and I'm not saying I would, I would win every one of those fights, but I personally think half of those should have been wins. If I just fought with more discipline, being smarter, fighting like I should fight rather than like fighting for fun. And I am so strict with my, my athletes. Like I, I 
it's not like, oh, go and fight how you want. It's like, no, we're going to do this. And if you don't do this, we've got a problem. You know, like me and you are going to have an argument. It's very much like it's kind of my way or the highway a little bit. Um, that said, like, it's very, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I, I allow people a lot, a lot of freedom in my system. But the only goal of, of what we're doing is is to, you know, have good quality performances and obviously ideally leading to wins, you know. So, like, you can have all the freedom in the world. But if you're not good at what you're doing or, or if there's an easier way to an easier path to victory, that is what we're taking. We're trying to be efficient, um, you know, and have, have solid performances. So if you want to be a striker, but you, you know, the guy in front of you needs to be taken down and grappled, then that's what you do. I don't care what you want, you know, and that's, I'm kind of trying to hold myself to that standard now, which in the past I've sometimes, you know, I've had a tendency to, you know, just do dumb shit just because it's fun. Um, but yeah. How much of that then experience that you've got that you just said they're doing dumb shit in your own fights? Do you think it helps when you are coaching these next guys coming up to tell them, look, I've made this mistake. Don't you start doing it? Oh, massively, massively. I've got no ego with my with my career in the past. I'm like, look, watch this fight, watch me do something stupid, you know, watch me do this, watch me do that, you know, and like I'm I'm I don't care. Like I've kind of left that behind now. Like that's why I feel like in my career now I've got a lot of freedom because I'm um, you know, I'm, I'm quite. I'll just own my losses now. I'm like, it is what it is. I'm moving forwards from that. It happened, and you know, it's not gonna. You know, I'm not gonna allow it to happen again so easily. So it's like, I have to hold them to a high standard because because I don't have a gym with. You know, if you have a hundred fighters on the mats, then you know you're gonna get five guys who are good no matter what. Even if you're a trash coach, you know you're gonna have five good fighters just because. There was a hundred people there, you know, and if you have 200, but you know, that's fine. But if I have a, a an actual, you know, I have a group in, in uh, fight zone itself, like I have the outside training group. And then as people start to compete more, have some interclubs, have some action fights, then they can be invited into the actual kind of private training. Um, but it's like the private training is not for me to carry people. It's my training. So like you better be able to keep up um, and I hold people to a high standard. So if I want to make, you know, like, at the moment, like coaching isn't my full time living. You know, I can I could make a living off it if I wanted, but it's not there yet. But by the time I retire in three, four, or five years, whatever it is, um, I want to you know have a a very very solid team. I want to have a solid stable of pros. I want to have a you know a bunch of amateur fighters. And and the best way to get that is either get you know the thousand people through the door, or just just make sure that you know of the of the people you have the standard is high hold them to a higher standard and they will you know they're going to achieve you know if i don't expect people to you know be the best then they won't be the best you know i don't want people to get good just by luck um i want people to get good by design and and at the moment we are having success you know we're having you know, i've only been you know, i've been coaching for a while longer but like i'm, I'm since we've just been here you know we've not all of our fights, but we've won most of the fights we've had have been W's. And it's not because, you know, I pick easy fights. Um, I, I specifically don't get easy fights from my guys. I hate going to fight shows. I absolutely hate it. It's time away from my family. Um, and time where, you know, as a coach, you're either not getting paid or barely getting paid, you know. Um, and I do it because I want to help the guys. So I'm not going to get cans for you to crush, which means you've got to fight real guys. And then, you know, then we're, we're judging ourselves against decent you know, decent opponents, you know, we, and we're, we're having a lot of success. So I'm pretty happy for now. How hard's that to juggle then? Your family life, your coaching life, your fighting life and your working life. How difficult is it to keep all them plates spinning at once? Uh, it's not too bad. It's it's honestly, it's not too bad. Like some of my, I'm, I'm quite lucky with the coach and some of my athletes are happy to jump in um, and help, um, you know, as and when I need to wind it down a little bit, which is useful. But generally I'm, I'm pretty smart now. I've worked out, um, I'm very lucky. Uh, my 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 missus, um, Fleur, you know, she is an absolute godsend. She, you know, she just, you know, if I say I've got to do this, she just she accepts it. She's 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 a wonderful person. She supports me, um, you know, like a hundred percent, which is a massive blessing. Like you know, like a, a partner in in combat sports can be a blessing or a curse, you know, depending on how they are. Um, and you know, she only helps me. She is only a benefit to me. And and what she doesn't, you know, she doesn't really give a shit about, you know, in terms of like whether I'm a good fighter or not. She just cares about, you know, whether I'm happy or not. So it's like, 
you know, when I finish being a fighter, you know, she won't, you know, if anything, she'll probably be happy that I'm not getting it every day. Um, so, like, I've got a really, really good, you know, external support system. So that helps. Finally, then, Stuart, just before I let you go, if Octagon fans haven't seen you in the cage before, what can they expect? And can I get a prediction off you for how you see Saturday night going, please? Um, I think they're just going to expect a high-paced fight, especially as a heavyweight. It's probably going to be a little bit high-paced, more um, more things are going to happen than most heavyweight fights. You know, I throw, I tend to, you know, got, you know, like shoot a lot of takedowns, throw a lot of punches and kicks, lots of ground and pound. Or, you know, I'm, I'm pretty busy generally. Um, prediction, I think I'm going to finish him. I don't really know how. I, I could I could see myself perhaps submitting him. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I, I think I'm kind of prepared. Like in my head, I've got like three game plans. Um, so I don't know which one's going to take place yet. We have to sort of see on the night and, you know, go go with the flow as things happen. Perfect. Stuart, look, thank you very much for your time, mate, and all the best on Saturday night. Thank you. Cheers, Jack. Thank you. Cheers.